The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to offer you five tips to make your growing season easier, as well as techniques for spring tree care maintenance. Our guest will be engineer and author Victor Zatare, and your questions will get answered. The hour is full, and it starts You are next. listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Welcome to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. We thank you for taking time out of your day, whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2022 through a radio app, through our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com under the season six radio tab in studio video or podcast replay we thank you for being with us if you want to be part of the program and participation is welcome you can do that by two very easy avenues one being email you can email your question to garden talk radio at gmail.com that's garden talk radio at gmail.com and we'll get an answer to you or you can give us a call on the proclamation hotline brought to you by proclamation goods that number is 1-800-927-SHOW 1-800-927-7469 Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. There you go, proclamationgoods.com. So we are going to tackle or provide you with five tips in order for you to have a better growing season, techniques on better growing. that You're going to have a better season after you're done listening to this segment. And we offer this advice to you because we have not had great successes in our garden because of some of these. Now, we're not going to tell you to you know make sure you water this and weed that, that type of thing. These are more out-of-the-box thinking um, tips, I guess. Right, Holly? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, just like maybe more unique or whatever. So the first one is don't narrow, don't, don't narrow your mind to this is the only way I can grow. Look at all different growing methods in which you can choose to grow, and there's a lot of them. There, there is a lot. So for one, and maybe you are growing – in one of these methods exclusively, haven't considered, you know, pop it in one of a few other ones and here's some inspiration for you. Or maybe you are like, I grow in all of these and maybe I'll try more of one or the other. So um, one is ground, obviously. And ground growing has been done for a long time. And it's a, it's a traditional way to grow. It, it's most of cost effective. Right, it's the most cost effective. But also, if you have bad soil, toxic soil, a lot of weeds, this may not be the way to go. Now, we started with ground gardening, and we have continued to ground garden in addition in addition to adapting to raised bed uh, gardening. Right. So that's the the ground gardening. We did change to raised bed ground gardening. Um, Whenever that was, two, two, 20, year, yeah. two years ago in 2020. Yeah. And the year that we all remember for specific reasons. And <laughs> it, you know, that's just the way it is. Our and parents then, had World War II in Vietnam, and we have these other things in our lives. But anyway. Right. So, anyway, that's, uh, we'll go on to raised by gardening. And raised by gardening can be a, a myriad of things. It can be anything from you buying the wood to, to building the raised beds. It can be you finding somebody who builds raised beds. Or pop-up raised beds, like from Root Maker. Or you can just get a couple, if you have the capabilities of getting some 6 or 8 or 10-inch diameter trees, throw them down, make a square or rectangle, and fill it with soil, and you got a raised bed there. 
Right. Or maybe you have some pallets and you want to do a pallet raised bed. Now, will it last as long as other other wood? Maybe not. No, but not. But it's an option. But you want to be sure you do not uh, get a pallet that uh, has th- there's certain markings on a pallet in which is safer to use than others, uh, the way they're treated and what the pallet was carrying. So, right. you, you know, you got ground garden, raised bed, container, elevated raised bed. You can do indoor gardening, hula culture gardening, uh, a straw bale gardening. There's a lot of, and that's just some of them. There's many, many more. But that gives, a, you know, th- you can do a lot. You can do a lot. Right. So then we also have know the weather and do not be eager. So this happens especially to to newer gardeners or gardeners who maybe have a neighbor who is taking these weather risks and they're like, well, you know, Jim Bob over there plants his tomatoes three weeks early because he just feels good about it. And then they do it or they just think that it's time because the ground can be worked. And then you have... There's been times in late February, early March, at least in our zone, where it's been 80 degrees. Right. The so, ground is yeah. 32, but it's 80 degrees ambient temperature, and, and it just doesn't work that well. There's that old saying, I'd much rather plant my tomatoes two weeks too late than the second time when my neighbor plants the first. Exactly. So That's a long saying. It doesn't go on a bumper sticker very well, but no. you get the point. Right. So you want to you be aware of the timing, and if you're not sure, you can go to any search engine and type in USDA Growing Zone, put your zip code, and it's going to give you information like um frost dates and when to there's all sorts of charts as to when to put things into the ground and and how now those are guidelines those aren't hard numbers the 22nd of this month is the last this and that doesn't mean the 23rd you can go ahead and do it you've got to be you know aware of the conditions but it is a very good guidance in which will help be more make things be better to grow and more successful Yes, correct. So that's the the second tip. Now the third one is you want to keep the staples crop, the staple crops, but also you know maybe explore some new crops. What are what what would you consider to be the top three staple staple crops in a garden? Tomatoes. Okay, one. Some sort of squash. Two. And some sort of root crop. Three. Yeah. Okay. What would you consider? Um, tomatoes, green beans, cucumbers. Okay. All right. We got two out of two out of three there, <laughs> um, but what we're talking about is the the things that you know will grow, grow well, and produce a lot in your garden. That is what we are. You know, continue to do that. If it works, keep doing it. But you can also don't narrow it down to being I can only grow these seven things every year. Explore. There's you know, Junk Seeds has great uh, selection of of unique seeds, and there's other companies that have phenomenal. Uh, seeds that they have basically brought back from the extinction and um, or, or that are not grown in your region as predominantly as uh, other places. Right. So and the reason why I suggested this tip is because, you, yeah, you may grow um, your five crops phenomenally. But if you try something new, you're going to learn. You're also going to possibly fail. <laughs> but then you'll have you'll have a growing experience for yourself. And that keeps things exciting and fun and interesting. Well, it's just some of the unique things in which we grow. Yacons, root crop from South America. We've grown Akas, O-C-A, root crop from South America. We grow Jerusalem artichokes, getting more popular. Um, those are kind of the, the more unique ones that, that we put in the ground uh, each year. And uh, we don't do the Akas anymore. The Jerusalem artichokes are perennial. And the Yacons, we grow every year. Um, and there's a lot of things in which you can do with a yacht kind of, we can talk about that at a different time, but, uh, something unique there, try something. Uh, another one, if you're going to buy products, buy products from reputable companies. If you, if you expect the El Cheapo piece of equipment that you bought on sale on the clearance aisle to last you 15 years, you might want to buy every one they got there because you're going to go through them pretty quick. Right. And if you're new to gardening and you're like, I don't know how much I want to commit to this and you buy the El Cheapo product, that's fine. And then maybe eventually you invest in something a little bit more. That's OK, too. Um, but it's... I mean, we have a, we have 32 companies that sponsor the program. You're here based on what they've agreed upon uh, currently and throughout the year. These are companies that we have worked with. We have studied. We have used their products. We have seen reviews. These are not companies that are fly-by-night, make the cheapest thing possible to get as much money, and then disappear. 
because these companies believe in gardening or whatever product they're selling. We've got a lot of not it's not exclusively garden products, but they have a reputation to uphold and a responsibility to produce a, cr- a product in which works and will last. Right. And that's that's all we can ask. So um, that's another tip. And then finally, we have brighten your tools. Yeah. Brighten your tools, either with fluorescent paint or tape. Your hand trial, your hand hoe, your little your your shovel, because if you just throw it down while you're planting tomatoes, that thing blends in. It's got a wooden handle that blends in with the dirt, and it's got a you know based on how new it is, maybe a discolorated metal that blends in with the uh, the leaves or whatever else debris. I mean, our clippers are orange, and you lose them all the time in the grass. So, so but but that that is a tip, <laughs> and then also uh, your long handled tools, your shovels, your hoes, your rakes. You can take and take a piece of sandpaper and just make sure if if it's a wooden handle, smooth it out, and then take a measuring tape and mark like every six inches and write you know six, twelve, one, two. So whenever you're digging or planting, you can just drop the shovel down and go. I need two foot between these plants. Dig, and you don't have to worry about it if you're really uh, concerned about the preciseness of spacing with your plants. So. Some things to keep in mind uh, to make your growing season better. Well, you can make your kitchen better. You can make your freezer better all through by with Walton's Incorporated. Yeah, we are brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from. Canning and preserving your fruits and vegetables is great, but what about the meat? At Walton's Inc., you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way. Walton's Inc. has everything you need to make any type of meat product. And then there's MeatJustics.com to help educate people in the hows and whys of meat processing, as well as of a community of over almost 15,000 users who help give their opinion and guidance on meat processing issues. You can make snack sticks that taste delicious, meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers, etc. to get you go from animal to edible. Seasonings, great stuff. You can go to Walton's.com or Walton's Inc.com. Walton's everything but the meat. You use code GROW22 to save 10% of orders of $50 or more. Walton's Inc.com. Yeah, whether you're a hunter, fisher uh, person, or you just want something good, seasonings and tools to use in your kitchen, Walton's Incorporated.com. Walton's Inc.com. GROW22. At checkout, save 10% on your orders of $50 or more and get that free shipping. Well, we're going to give you some free advice next break, uh, next segment about taking care of your trees this spring. Hang out with us. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. The Water Hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush. Conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The Water Hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. Carpenter bees cause costly structural damage to wood siding, decks, doors, eaves, and railings. Our solution is Trapstick from Rescue. It catches carpenter bees all season long. Trapstick uses no pesticides. Carpenter bees are in enticed by colors and pattern and get stuck on the adhesive. Save your wood structures from damage from carpenter bees with Trapstick from Rescue. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular Rescue Fly and Yellow Jacket Traps. Learn more at CarpenterBeeControl.com. That's CarpenterBeeControl.com. Protect your outdoor furniture, fire pits, grills, and more with custom covers from CoversAndAll.com. Springtime means you don't know what the weather is going to do. Rain, sun, snow, ice, maybe everything in 48 hours. Covers and All's durable custom covers protects against it all. They've got a bunch of fabrics to choose from, and each one can be customized to fit any style, size, or shape to keep your outdoor furniture looking brand new year-round. Visit them at CoversAndAll.com and use code GARDEN. 25 at checkout to save 25% off your purchase. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. 
Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. This week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit DrZymes.com forward slash garden talk. Preventative measures before planting before you amend your soil for the season, apply one cup of Eliminator to five gallons of warm water and spray over the planting area and then add more water after you apply so that the product can penetrate the soil. This will ensure that you rid your soil of insect eggs, larvae, molds, and mildews and start the season off right. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the time of harvest, and doesn't leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Take the guesswork out of composting with Hot Bin Composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Happy you're with us. A lot of content in this week's show, as we provide every week. And what we would suggest that uh, the, a problem, Holly, a lot of people have is overwatering or underwatering whatever they're growing. And that includes trees, bushes, and shrubs. And if you're tired of trying to do the guesswork, Tree Diaper will have the answer for you. Tree Diaper has the answer for you. How do you water your trees? You likely drag a hose over to it, let the hose run for about a half hour. Overwatering or underwatering your trees, stop doing that. Increase your watering efficiency and save money with Tree Diaper. No hoses to drag around constantly. Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases stored rainwater when trees need it. If the, the Tree Diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants every time it rains. Tree Diaper recharges, made in the USA, with check out all the sizes they have available. Tree Diaper will keep your trees happy. Visit TreeDiaper.com. That's TreeDiaper.com. Well, it, talking about trees, shrubs, and bushes, uh, let's talk about uh, what we need to do in order to best utilize the trees that are on our property. What I mean by is, techniques in which things that we need to do to our trees holly yeah so the first thing so this is spring tree springtime yeah and if you're not doing it you want to do it as soon as possible before buds begin to appear on the tree that's very important so if the first thing you want to do is you want to inspect your trees now you may have a tree that doesn't look like it's going to make it and then you would want to remove that tree but you also want to look at the trees that And that's part of that's part of the deal. Part of the deal. Yep. But you also want to look at the trees that are are fine and you want to look for dead, damaged, diseased limbs. Um you know, maybe there's like a deadwood, frostbite situation, uh, lesions, things like that. And it, it, if the tree is really, really tall, obviously you're, you're not, you know, going to jump on a ladder or have a bucket truck come up and and take care of those things. We're talking about things that are manageable in a safe manner. That is, you know, if you've got a small fruit tree or ornamental tree that is, you know, only 10, 10 feet tall, whatever that you can get with a uh, telescoping saw or snip that that's what we're referring to we're not saying that you should shimmy up the tree like a deer hunter and try to remove things that you should not be doing because it's unsafe right because people die that's a real thing don't be stupid no we don't we don't want you to be stupid or you know even if 
even worse, you get injured. And well, well, and hiring somebody to do yeah. it, that bill is a lot cheaper than the uh, the ambulance ride, the emergency visit, and the hospital stay. And then at this point, these days, you know, you might have to take off work. Yeah. So you don't know. So um, think so four th- times, make one cut. Exactly. Yeah. So hiring an arborist, there's nothing wrong with that. Certified arborist. You want a certified arborist. You don't want somebody that's in a, you know, just a Jimmy's tree service and they make a bad cut and it falls in the house and they get in the car and drive away and you don't know anything about them. Right. Make sure they're a certified arborist and they have a license and you've seen that license. And this is not a joke. We've had people on the program who are guests on the program who stress this and know stories that are like that where the person made an oops, they disappeared. And the homeowners now are responsible for all the damage that n- non-educated person did. Right. Even just not guests, even when we were, we were doing like garden talks. Yeah. People who came to those. So that's one thing is you want to prune, inspect, and then, you know, get professional help where, where necessary. The other thing is you want to make sure the trees have enough water for a solid growing season. Most places this is not an issue in the spring, but you you want to consider this um, throughout the season. But maybe maybe you discovered last year that that tree is an area that doesn't get enough water. Tree diaper. Possibly. Yeah. Tree diaper. Tree diaper. Will, yep. Tree diaper will fix that problem for you. they got multiple sizes available. Uh, for any size tree that you get, you got it, treediaper.com. Uh, and, you know, so ensure you have plenty of water. And in that instance, with the tree diaper, you can use mulch. And mulch is very important for a variety of reasons, if you mulch correctly. Right. So, um, so yeah, mulch is, is important because it helps suppress weeds. And then it also helps keep moisture in. But there's a bad mulching way, and then there's a good mulching way. And the bad mulching way is what's called volcano mulch, which basically people just, whoever applies the mulch, kind of just puts it right up to the tree, and then, and up, then up they... The trunk, up about, the trunk, about two foot, and then what... It looks a, like a volcano. looks like a volcano, and what is occurring is that bark is not... Trees don't want dirt on their bark. That's why the roots are underground and the bark's above the ground. But you put that mulch up against that bark and up the trunk... You are going, you're causing mold, mildew, rot issues. You're causing roots to start growing in places roots should not be growing, and they will begin to choke out the feet or the, the main roots because they're going to get wrapped around, cause a whole lot of problems. And this is not just homeowners that don't understand how to mulch. These we have seen and others have seen mulch, uh, very large companies that do this for a living, volcano, mulch, vo- volcano mulching trees in... Uh, business parks in and city parks and when you go up to them oh we know what we're doing they're killing trees it happens a lot especially in business parks because they hire landscaping services that are just applying the mulch but the landscaping services don't you know they hire somebody who can can do the job but they're not a necessarily garden professional or somebody who was get the job, do the job, move to the next job, right. fast, fast, fast. Right. They have those accounts that they have to fulfill. So this you see this a lot in business parks. Most most city uh, like city workers themselves are educated not to to do the volcano mulch and um, because they want those trees to. If you kind of know what we're time. talking about, but not sure, go to your search engine and type in volcanic mulching on trees, and they'll be you'll have plenty of images, and then you'll be like, oh yeah, I I I've seen that. That's right. not good. Yeah. So you want to avoid that for sure. Um, and I just want to touch briefly, um, and you had mentioned this, Joey, when we were talking about the, the trimming. Uh-huh. There's that three-cut three, three, cut three branch cu- removal. Yeah, if you're going to cut a large limb, and I'm talking something that's an inch diameter or larger, there is a specific proper way in order to trim a large limb so it doesn't snap and rip the bark down the side of the tree. It, there's a way of doing this, and uh, w- how would we best describe this? It's a so, th- it's a three point cut. Three- so the the purpose of it yeah. is to you're going to cut it so that you're cutting the bulk of the limb off. The weight then, it will be removed. The weight, yeah, yeah, the weight, and then you're fine tuning it. So you're going to take and you're going to cut a notch, um, one foot uh, away from the a foot away. Yeah, yep. you're going to cut a notch below the limb. Uh huh. So you're not going to cut the limb off at, completely at that point, but you're going to cut the notch off. And sometimes you're going to limb... cut a notch into the lower uh, of the the bottom portion of the limb in which you're removing, one foot out from the trunk, halfway through that limb. 
Now, if the limb is heavy enough, it might just snap off. Right. But that's why you do this method so that you are not going to allow the limb to rip the bark off the tree. So if the limb snaps off, then you don't have to worry about step two. But if it does not, then at step two, what you'll do is you will cut a few inches out from that notch and you'll just cut it straight off. And then that should allow you to have about a one foot chunk of tree uh, of limb left attached to the tree. And then you want to take and go about one to two inches from the trunk and cut the remaining portion of that limb in which you're removing off. You don't want to go flush against the trunk because you're going to cause damage. You, it will heal over. It will scab over and, and, and cover that uh, over. You can also uh, use Ivy Organics tree uh, paint uh, for that. Uh, use coupon code RADIO10 at checkout. Save 10% on your order at ivyorganics.com. And that will help uh, protect the tree from insect damage if that is a concern to you. But this is the proper way in which it's called a three-cut tree branch removal. If you want a visual, you can search that, and that will uh, show exactly how to do it. So then our yeah. So then our final tip is to um, remove any weeds and excess debris around the base of the tree. So this is something you would typically do before you mulch, but, but weeds come through mulch. Right. This is not a not a oh you got mulch on it. Well, not a problem in the world. Uh, you want to avoid probably weed. I would avoid weed barrier or weed cloth of any sort. Just utilize the mulch. The but yeah, so yeah. you want to. Be, but before you mulch, either way, you want to remove any weeds. And if the mulch is, you know, sad looking and there's not much there, replace. Um, you can you can remove that too and then replace. But if you're going to remove any sad looking mulch, might as well remove the weeds mm -hmm. because a lot of that ground ivy, grasses, they can just create extra waste around the base of the tree, and then this can cause things like mold, fungus, etc., which could then affect the tree. So you want to remove that that wasty, um, weedy growth. Right, and, and if you want something all natural, um, it's a horticultural-grade vinegar. You can get it at nat natgreenproducts.com. Use co co uh, promo code WEEDS, and you can get three gallons. If you buy three gallons, you get the fourth gallon free at natgreenproducts.com. And that's weeds at checkout if you're wanting to get uh, bulk up and get ready to go for spring and use a horticultural-grade vinegar and not a glyphosate. That's the way to go. Another way to go, Holly, is getting prepared and properly dealing with those Japanese beetles that are going to be in our yards and around our gardens this summer. If we can get them now, it, that's the best thing. Yeah, so with spring just around the corner, it's time to start thinking about controlling those beetles and grubs in your yard, Japanese beetles, et cetera. You know they are up here in the Midwest um, where we they're are. They're everywhere. And they're everywhere at this point now. So you want to think about those. Uh, grub gone can be used to apply to turf or garden around ornamentals. Everywhere you can use it. Controls grubs and lessens the impact of beetles that will be had on your yard this summer. Easy to use. Apply with a commercial spreader or irrigate right into the soil. Biologically specific to target grubs and beetle invaders. Biologically targeted. That's the key word here because they have created a formula in which it's going to tackle and kill the beetles and grubs and not harm your beneficial insects like your bees, your butterflies, and your ladybugs. Yeah, and so you can use the only not that's the only non chemical that works. You can find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L O M bioproducts.com. If you use code Garden Talk Ten, you save ten percent off your orders at phylumbioproducts.com. Hang out. Victor Zatare, engineer and author, with us next. You're uh, listening to The Gardening with Joey and Holly, radio Have show. a gardening question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now, 1-800-927-SHOW. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, Internal Wood Stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. 
Straw Bale Gardening is all the rage. Get your bale started easily with the Bale Buster Straw Bale Conditioning Formula. This is the only product that has been specifically formulated for use in straw bale gardening. Each unit contains 250 million colony forming units of trichoderma, fungi, and bacillus bacteria, in addition to the fertilizer itself. Produces fantastic results with a bountiful production of vegetable crops. Start with the best to get the best, traditional or organic formula. Take the guesswork out of conditioning your straw bale. Go to bellbuster.com to find out more. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10 TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night, dries clear, and odorless. It will not clog your sprayer. Deer Defeat works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Safe, effective, and works on rabbits. Money-back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use code RADIO to save 10% on your order. Deer Defeat. It can't be beat. Chapin has the tools you need to water, feed, and protect your garden. We make equipment for lawn and garden care, and we are always innovating to help make your next growing season a success. Our newest products are the 5010 Rose Duster, watering tools including hose nozzles, sprinklers, and timers, the mixes on exit backpack sprayer that mixes concentrate as you spray. You can find all products at www.chapinmfg.com, major online retailers, home improvement stores, and hardware stores near you. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy Plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloomingeasyplants.com. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and click on the money tab at the top of the page and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Victor Zatere, moments away. But first, do you want? are you looking for a product that will feed your soil, feed your plants, and is odorless and works? Well, we've got the product for you. Are you worrying about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow their potential. Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you are getting 100% worm casting, not filler plus castings. Promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow's all-natural, odor-free worm castings. There's only one ingredient, worm castings. Worm castings, that's it. No chemicals or additives will seep into your food, and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. So for indoor or outdoor use, you can buy the bag, bundle, ton, or truckload. Check out Simple Grow 100% worm castings what they can do for your plants in order to do it at simplegrow.com. Simplegrow.com. We're happy that they've come on the program. Let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods and bring in our guest for this week. Victor Zatteray is an MIT engineer, inventor, and a very accomplished LED indoor growing gardener. He has presented numerous times in places on 
in places on indoor growing with LED lights and is passionate about high efficient LED growing. He is the co-author of recently published book, Grow Lettuce in Your Living Room. And full disclosure, Victor is half of the owner of Happy Leaf LED, which is one of our sponsors. Yep. And we want to welcome Victor to the program. Well, thank you very much, uh, Joey and Holly. It's it's great to, uh, I can't say see you again, but uh, <laughs> hear you again. So it's, it's uh, missed you at the fair in Wisconsin this year. Absolutely. So. Well, many people think about growing vegetables outside. Common, you know, what are you going to do? Garden outside, but not inside. Why would you encourage people to grow indoors instead of outside? Well, I could probably make a list of 10 different things, but I will start by just a couple. One is that it is very easy and it's actually very possible to do. And the other thing is, is that most of us um, are, that are gardeners miss, you know, gardening the rest of the year. You know, if we only garden six months of the year, what do you do the other six months? And now it's possible to do that with the right quality of light. And the other last thing I should mention is most of us actually eat all year long. So, so right. that actually helps to be able to grow some of your own food at home indoors all year long. And it's, it's happy, you know, it's healthy and, and uh, it, it tastes great. So th- those are some of my reasons at least. Right. And we have, te- we're testimonials of that. We, as of last Thursday, it it was one year that we planted our three tiny Tim tomatoes in one gallon grow bags underneath the happy leaf led grow lights. And they are still growing today and there'll be a video on our website coming up documenting that one year anniversary. Yeah. Lo- love to see your results uh, we've had similar where we can keep the tomatoes going and they produce great tasting little tomatoes for a full year or more. So definitely. So talk to us about the led grow light versus other indoor grow lights on the market, why? What makes them superior? Better, superior yeah. versus uh, some of those other ones. Yeah, what's different between the El Cheapo ones you bought on sale and an investment that will last twenty years, or maybe even something like a T yeah. five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so most of us, I think, are pretty much beginning to realize that LEDs are really the future of horticultural lighting. Um, you know, in the past, we used fluorescence, we used high pressure sodium metal halide, all of those lights are really lights that were designed to light rooms up, not necessarily optimized for growing plants. And with LEDs, we can do things that you could never have dreamed of before with other types of grow lights. And to give you an example is a good quality LED grow light puts out about four to five times more light for the same amount of energy as a fluorescent. So where a fluorescent, you may have to be five or six or 10 inches away from a, from a plant. With LEDs, you can be a lot further away and still get really excellent plant growth. But probably one of the more important things is LEDs are different colors. And when you mix the right types of colors, red, blue, and green, in the right ratios, you can get incredible uh, plant growth. Uh, the plants are healthy, they grow quickly, they absorb nutrients really efficiently. And and that's really one of the things that I really pride ourselves in is that we've been able to grow or develop a grow light that gives you the right amount of light and the right quality of light to be able to produce food, pretty much anything from microgreens all the way up to like what we talked about earlier, tomatoes indoors in your living room in a kitchen in a basement wherever you'd like to grow in very little space so hopefully that's that makes enough sense there uh, yes it does uh, let's talk about your book growing lettuce in your living room it's out and what is something in the book that is unique noteworthy that would encourage our listeners to get a copy well dan Shearis, who's the co-author and i <clears throat> have spent literally seven years years developing really unique ways of growing everything from microgreens to herbs to leafy greens to lettuces to beets to carrots to, to you know cucumbers i actually picked a cucumber today off uh, some of the plants that i'm growing indoors and it really is we've developed ways that are simple inexpensive quiet 
um, don't require a lot of maintenance and you can grow it in your home and we've done the work for you. We've spent those seven years figuring it out. And that's really what the book's about. It's really there to help you understand in a very simple way what you can do uh, to grow much of your own food at home all year long. And I think that's that's the single most important thing I, I can say about the book. And there is a section in the book on lighting. And I think that's something that really many people don't understand very well because there's so much confusion out there. And uh, we spent a lot of time trying to make it understandable how to pick an LED grow light that will truly allow you to grow all sorts of food. And it, you know, many of us see these uh, Chinese made grow lights on Amazon and Home Depot and we go out and get one. We try it and it just doesn't work. You know, the light spectrum isn't right. The intensity isn't right. And we try to actually in this book, uh, give you more information that will help you make the decisions on what are the best grow lights to actually purchase to, to be able to do this. And, so. and, and like anything in life, you get what you pay for. If you buy the El Cheapo lights you bought on sale, they're probably not going to do what an investment of a Happy Leaf LED light will do. Well, it won't do, first of all, uh, but you get what you pay for. You put a little more yeah. money in it, you're going to get really good quality stuff. I, I would agree with you there. And, and I think... The other thing we do is all of our lights are not only do we design them uh, here, we actually build the lights in Northern Illinois. So it's all US made and um, we're really proud of that. And we only sell the lights directly to the consumer. So we don't have a lot of middlemen that add cost to it. So you get a great fair price for a light that will last you for 10 years and uh, you'll be very happy with the results. We have not had a single customer in the seven years we've been in business that says we, we want to return the light and it doesn't work. So it's, 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 it's been working great for everybody that we've uh, worked with. So what gave you the idea or the inspiration to invent and create your LED grow lights? Well, that can sort of be a long story, but I'll, I'll shorten it here. So um, I, I worked, for a company called Molex. And about um, seven, eight years ago, uh, we had a customer that said, can you make a grow light? And, and I was in a lighting group at the time. And so we developed one and I tried it and it worked incredibly well. And since I'm already a very avid outdoor gardener, I got very excited about that. And I had friends and relatives say, hey, where do I get those? And they couldn't buy them from Molex. So we started Happy Leaf to provide our friends and relatives a way to get these lights. And then uh, the company quickly decided that they are no longer um, in the business of making grow lights. So Polly and I decided to make our own. And now we're on our seventh generation of light. We've worked with professors from Purdue and Michigan State. And we feel like we have a state-of-the-art product that can compete with any commercial light out there at a fraction of the cost. So that's sort of the long story, and, and that's how we got to where we are. Well, let's talk about a term that you use quite a bit in your videos and at, at, at expos, passive hydroponics. You, what is that? What is passive hydroponics, and what is how do you use that with the Happy Leaf LED lights? So... Passive, most of us have heard of hydroponics. Hydroponics is where you're growing in water, but almost always you have pumps and motors and electricity and measuring pH and all that. Passive means that you don't have to, you just plant it and the plants absorb water, the roots grow down towards through the water, and it doesn't require any pumps, no motors. You could literally plant it, go on vacation for three to four weeks in Florida, and when you come back, your, your lettuce and your herbs and everything else is ready to eat. Um, it's completely silent. So this was a method developed by Dr. Bernard Kratke at the University of Hawaii 30 years ago. He's a PhD from Purdue that taught at the University of Hawaii. And uh, he's a super guy. I've actually uh, talked to him and communicated with him. In fact, we dedicate um, our book to uh, Bernie, as he calls himself. I feel it's an ingenious method. It works great. And in our book, we have four different ways of doing passive hydroponics, which allows you to grow all of these different types of uh, 
different types of fruits and vegetables and herbs and tomatoes and whatever else you want. So that's passive hydroponics. Well, we appreciate the time you've offered us. Uh, and you and, and Happy Leaf has also provided a coupon code for our listeners. Coupon code Joey Holly. That'll get you ten percent off your orders of ninety dollars or more. First time buyers, uh, one promo code per customer, and uh, you can find that out at, the, at our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener dot com. Uh, Victor, how can people find out find your book and find out more information about uh, the lights? Well, there are several options. The book itself is available um, on Amazon or through our Happy Leaf LED website, and it's called uh, Grow Lettuce in Your Living Room. Um, There's also a lot of information available on our YouTube channel. So if you go to a Happy Leaf LED um, on our YouTube channel, you'll see a lot of information. And there's also a lot of information on our Happy Leaf LED website. So there's some you know, information in terms of videos, testimonials, data sheets, anything on the lights you're also interested in. So a lot of, lot of information out there. Or you can just call us or contact us. Well, uh, our phone is obvious. Yeah, we're, well, we, you want to give out your phone number? Sure. I'll give you uh, my number. It's uh, 630-728-1107. I'd love to hear from you and answer any questions you may have. Well, Victor, we thank you for the time you've offered us and for creating a light that many gardeners across the country and possibly the world are growing in a way that they would not be able to without your technology. Well, we, we have a lot of fun doing it, so uh, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad it's working for you, uh, Holly and Joey. Well, thank you. And when we come back, it's going to be your garden questions, our garden answers. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Ship Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door for free. Ship Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Goodbye biting bugs and plant invaders. No more bugs by Naturally Green Products is your answer. A product pioneered by the USDA and 12 years in business, No More Bugs has been a favorite by consumers across the country. More than a repellent, it is safe for you, your plants, pets, and home. Visit natgreenproducts.com and enter promo code GREENTHUMB10 for 10% off your purchase of any size of No More Bugs. Introducing the Johnny Appleseed Authentic Algeo Apple Tree, grafted from the last known surviving tree planted by the real Johnny Appleseed. The Johnny Appleseed Authentic Algeo Apple Tree was shepherded through nearly 200 years of American history by a family of rural Ohio farmers. Now you can grow this one-of-a-kind heirloom tree right in your own backyard. Order your tree today at shopjohnnyappleseed.com. That's shopjohnnyappleseed.com. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. Use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Spring is around the corner, folks, and Algae Men reminds you that this year, when it's time for spring cleaning, don't forget about the outside of your house. Algae Men is southeastern Wisconsin's go-to for exterior cleaning, including roofs, siding, decks, and concrete. So if you spot ugly black stains or green splotchy stuff on your home, let Algae Men get rid of it for you. We can restore the area back to its original look, not only in a timely manner, but also at an affordable cost. For a free estimate, visit us today at algemen.com. Algae Men, we clean areas that you don't want to. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons, their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's rootmaker.com. 
Thanks for listening to the Guardian with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Guardian with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zine, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. A lot of information as we've pumped out to you each and every program. We're happy that uh, you're able to be with us. Well, if you've got a question, it's time for question and answer time. Uh, you can submit that question to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you would like to uh, give us a call, you can certainly do that on the Proclamation Goods Hotline. Brought to you by Proclamation Goods. The Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pit, stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with the versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. We're always happy when people tune in to the program and give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-7469. Uh, whether they have a question or they just want to voice their appreciation for the program. And Jim did just that. Jim, Parker, South Dakota. I listened to WNAX 570, biggest radio signal in the country during the day. I love your show. I listen getting ready for church every week. I'm great. glad it's on. I love listening. I hope a lot of other people do. And you remind me with, it, uh, with the deal with the radishes. My dad was out there every year this time of year on top of the snow. And he loved them. So thanks a lot. Appreciate the show. You're doing great. And uh, he was referring to our conversation last week about uh, cool season crops by just throwing the seeds on the snow and letting the natural progression of uh, hydration and the soil temperature uh, being proper for them to germinate. So we appreciate, Jim, you giving us a call. You can do just like Jim did at 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-SHOW. Holly, we're going to go to the emails and see what we can push through to the top of the hour. Sure. So I've heard it's recommended that potting soil is not to be reused as like put it in the compost or in the garden what are your thoughts well if it is our rule of thought is this if it's in a 10 gallon grow bag or smaller dump it out start over but whenever you start getting in the 12 15 20 30 45 60 gallon grow bags that gets a little expensive and the there's enough soil in there and enough microbial life in which it will revitalize itself, but also you're topping the, be the the grow bag off or the container off every year, which is helping that. So that would be our answer. Yes, if it's a small container, one gallon, three, five, eight, dump it. But if it's larger than a 10, save your money, re just top it off. Or if you feel like, yeah, I had tomatoes in the bag, you can take about a quarter to a half of the bag out and then retop the, the bag with new compost. That that would work. Uh, that would work for us, and we've done that. That's not something we're we've done that, and it's worked very well and saved money uh, on that end as well. Right. So the next question is: I am looking to get more soil for my raised beds this season. I am trying to use as many organic and natural products as possible. Good. If I call my landscape garden center and ask for some sort of topsoil or compost, am I getting quality soil, or should I just get like some bags or? Or what? So with that being said, you you don't want topsoil. Well, first of all, you don't want to go with bags if you're filling raised beds. Right. Uh, because a bag, let, let's just put round numbers to make it. If a bag is $10 and it's one cubic foot and you need, you know, uh, multiple, like, you know, two or three cubic yards, you're spending multiple hundred dollars. Right. So for one, bulk soil is going to be the the ideal uh, price point for you. Um but you, you don't want topsoil. You want to find out if they have a raised bed mix. 
You want to find out if they just have some sort of compost mix. And you can ask the people who work at the the landscape garden, garden center. center, you know, say I typically grow, grow organically. What to do with this one? Do you have any recommendations? If, Tell them what you're looking for. If they're selling bulk compost or uh, soil mixes, it's not going to be, they're not going to be selling toxicity leveled material. Uh, if you're in the Milwaukee area, Blue Ribbon Organics is a great source. We've gotten from them. It's worked phenomenal. And uh, you want to call your local independent garden center that has a yard, a, a compost yard, something like that. And they will either have a very well-established brand in which they provide for the community, or they have made their own mix. And them, they have it tracked. They know where every single move has made through that composting process from the material that came in to the final product, and that is quality con quality control because the last thing that your independent garden center wants or your compost company wants is to have five or 10 or 15 semi truck loads full of compost and it's all toxic and they, and it's, it's killing everybody's plants. So uh, give them a call there. We've never had a problem with compost that was bought in bulk uh, at all. So good question. Hopefully we was able to answer that for you. Here's another question, Holly, for you. Any advice on how to get rid of bamboo? Well, you can move. <laughs> so planting bamboo is very mm -hmm. uh, risky. Even in, a even in a container. Even in a container. It's pretty aggressive, and it spreads, and I would 130% not recommend it. So, But if you need to get rid of it, one thing you can do is you can try to... The roots grow two to three feet deep, so you can't necessarily pull it out. You could try, but it, they... They grow like these very aggressive roots. Right. Um, so what you want to do is you want to just keep mowing it down. This should hopefully slow the growth and eventually, if you can, especially if you can get below like the rhizome, it's going to help. So as soon as you see growth or if you know where the growth is, if you can keep mowing it down, it will stop it from being able to to photosynthesize and and grow. Um, some people do use herbicides on it. But the other people have found that it doesn't do anything. Well, we have a friend back home, and he decided to plant some bamboo in the yard. And it became very ap uh, apparent very quickly that that was a, a, a planting item that should not have been planted in the yard. And uh, He did everything. He covered it with black tarp. He mowed it over. I think actually like four or five years later it finally went away. But he actually called the big glyphosate company. We won't mention name, but you know who we're talking about. And they said, well, our product won't touch it. So when the biggest chemical weed killing company in the country tells you that the bamboo that you're growing, that their product won't touch it, that's some aggressive stuff. And um, there's you know, a lot of good things that bamboo can be made out of. But you don't want to plant it in the ground. And if you're going to plant it in a container, and bamboo is a very pretty plant. If you're going to plant it in a container, you want to plant it in a container on a slab of solid concrete that has no cracks. You want to avoid planting it in a container on a patio where there's bricks, where that root can penetrate through the bricks. Solid piece of concrete that will prevent that from actually finding uh, outside soil to root in and cause a whole lot of problems. If you really like bamboo for for whatever reason, and there's nothing wrong and there's with nothing that, nothing wrong with that. But maybe you're growing it to dry it for de decoration or whatever. Then you may want to look into just purchasing the decorative bamboo. Right. If you just think bamboo is cool, then maybe get something for your desk or like a little house plant bamboo type thing. One of those, um, I think they're called like little lucky bamboo plants. Don't don't plant bamboo. All right, next question. I live in Wisconsin. I listen to your radio show every Saturday morning, and you're talking about, and you've talked about pole bean uh, rust on those plants. I've had it in my bush beans as well. Is there anything I can do to prevent it from occurring again this growing season? Well, if you, well, if you got it last year, you should have pulled those plants out and threw them away. Hopefully, you but it is, an airborne it is an airborne spore thing. The good news is that they it kind of usually comes at the end of the growing right. season. So if you do get it again, I would just continue to keep tossing those plants. Even if the leaves are, and when we call bean rust, it, it actually looks like it's very brown substance on the leaves of the plant. And when you touch it, it's like you touched a rusty piece of metal. It, that's why they call it rust. 
And even if the beans themselves are not affected by the disease, the problem, you still do not want to eat them because it is the, the plant is infected. Now, whether or not you're going to get sick, whether I don't know. I'm just telling you, my, rec, my, my expertise says don't eat the beans. Don't eat fruit or vegetables from any diseased plant. Okay, that's just how that works. Um, so, but it will come in and this is the same thing that occurs in the large, big ag industry with soybeans. It's a, it's a rust that comes through the state county, county, the, the, um, ag office will send out notifications going, it's here. Um, so you want to, you don't want to burn it. You want to just get rid of it. Uh, composting it, I, I think it just throw it in the trash is the safest mo means. And then if you can avoid planting in that area again, just for the off chance that it may still be somehow in that area, but it comes through the air, it comes through spores, and um, that just we've had years where we've had none, and then we've had years where it's just been ba boom, ba boom. It, it's kind of like late blight uh, in the, in the sense of it's a swing and a miss, and or it's a it's everywhere. Right. So with that being said, we are out of time, and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today? Well, we can uh, help you with that. We can provide you the link of this program if you want. Uh, you can send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com, or you can uh, uh, find this show and past shows underneath the radio tabs at our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, um, and uh, check it out there. Tune in next week for the program. We're going to talk about how you can grow successful large Brussels sprouts as well as raised bed mistakes. Our guest will be author Emily Murphy, and your questions will get answered. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. <laughs>